We all know CEOs make a lot of money. They've climbed the company ladder to get the fancy office and dedicated parking spot. Or in some cases, their parents have handed the position over to them. That being said, being the CEO of the world's biggest company doesn't necessarily mean you're the highest paid. Jeff Bezos is known by many as the world's richest man, and he is. But his base salary as a CEO is only $81,840 per year. Today, we're going to take a look at the world's highest paid CEOs, some of which may surprise you, and many of whom you may have never heard of. We'll take a look at their climb to the role as CEO and see exactly how much money they earn. Number 10. Shantanu Narayan If you work in any creative field, chances are you're paying this man's salary every time you open the software on your computer. Shantanu Narayan is the current CEO of Adobe. In 2019, his total CEO compensation was $39.1 million. The annual company revenue is $11.2 billion, with a median employee salary of $147,115, which means the total CEO compensation is 266 times higher than that of the average employee's pay. So, how did he come to make so much money? He grew up in India and went on to earn a bachelor's degree in electronics and communication engineering engineering. He moved to the United States of America to receive his MBA from the University of California, Berkeley, and quickly got started on his career. And man, did he hit it out of the park right away. Shantanu's first big job was at Apple. He moved on to work for Silicon Graphics as the director of desktop and collaboration products. After working for Silicon Graphics, he climbed the ranks until he accepted a job at Adobe in 1998 as senior vice president of worldwide products research. His hard work paid off because he was promoted to CEO in late 2007. Under his guidance, Adobe rose to become a Fortune 400 company and has had an increase in revenue every year. There's not much details about Shantanyu and his family. He's very private about his personal life, tries his best to keep out of the spotlight. Number 9. Bill McDermott Bill McDermott is a CEO I honestly hadn't heard of before this list, which is rather surprising considering the circles I I tend to run into. Although I must admit, I'm not huge in the tech scene, and Bill McDermott certainly is. As the CEO of software company ServiceNow, Bill's annual CEO compensation is $41.7 million, compared to the median employee salary of $223,544, which is actually the second highest amount on your list. That being said, ServiceNow makes $3.5 billion annually, so it seems like they can definitely afford it. Bill got his start in business at a young age. At 16, he made his first investment when he bought a delicatessen in Long Island. The deli cost him $7,000, and it hugely influenced his life. He studied business at Dowling College, and while he was there, he continued to run the deli, using that money to pay off his schooling. Using your own business to pay for business school? That's a pretty cool move, if you ask me. He went on to go to Northwestern for management and after that, he dug his heels in and looked for bigger and better jobs. He landed at Xerox for 17 years, working in a variety of jobs before he switched over to be the executive vice president of Cybel Systems. In 2002, he was appointed as the CEO of SAP America, a software company based in Germany. By 2014, he moved on to become the CEO of SAP as a whole, becoming the very first American to do so. He was extremely successful there, increasing the market value from $39 billion to $159 billion. Though he got his fill of sap after a few years, he switched over to ServiceNow and became CEO, and one might even wonder if it was the salary that brought him to the company. Number 8. Lachlan Murdoch Surprisingly, all of the CEOs on our list are self-made, except for Lachlan Murdoch. The current CEO of Fox Corporation, Lachlan's total CEO compensation in 2019 19 was $42.1 million, and the annual company revenue of Fox is $11.4 
billion. Lachlan was born into ultra wealth. His father, Rupert Murdoch, founded News Corporation. Because of this, Lachlan grew up bouncing between living in New York City and attending school in Aspen. He earned a bachelor's degree from Princeton in philosophy, though he didn't have to use it at all. When he was 18, he was flown to Australia to meet with his dad and trained at the Daily Mirror. At 22, he became the general manager of Queensland newspapers. He kept going in the media business, just like his father, and became the publisher of The Australian, Australia's first national newspaper. In 1995, he was appointed deputy CEO of News Limited, and his role climbed year after year. In 1996, he became executive director. In 2000, he became deputy chief operating officer. Then he went on to become executive vice president, and then chairman. In his role as VP, he was influenced by a friend to invest in one tell. Unfortunately, the investment was doomed to fail and was criticized highly by his workers. The company ended up failing and Murdoch had agreed to a $40 million settlement. In 2005, shortly after this, he abruptly stepped down from his role. He then founded a private investment company called Illyria Pty, which invested in dozens of companies, including Nova Entertainment. In 2014, he returned to the family business, becoming the co-chairman of News Corporation. His role there only lasted a year before he took on an even bigger role, the executive chairman of 21st Century Fox. And when Fox was bought out by Disney in 2019, he was named that CEO of Fox Corporation, where he remains to this day. Number 7. Satya Nadella Microsoft is a company you've probably heard of, but you may not have heard of Satya Nadella, the current CEO. His 2019 CEO compensation was a whopping $42.9 million dollars, while the median employee earns $172,512 a year. Satya was born in India and went to Monopol Institute of Technology, where he received a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. He then made the leap to the United States, where he went to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and certainly froze his tail off. He started his career at Sun Microsystems, then joined Microsoft in 1992. His role in Microsoft was important immediately. He led major projects, mainly the big move to cloud computing. The cloud revenue grew from $16.5 billion to $20.3 billion under him alone. He served as the senior vice president of research and development for the online services division. Later, he became the president of Microsoft's server and tools business division. In 2014, he made the big leap to CEO, the third in the company's history. At the time, his annual salary was $700 thousand dollars, though it has grown since then. He's made big moves as CEO. His first acquisition was Mojang, the game company known for Minecraft, which costs about $2.5 billion. He also purchased LinkedIn for $26.2 billion and GitHub for $7.5 billion. Number 6. Miguel Patricio Perhaps the most secretive CEO on our list, Miguel Patricio is the CEO of a pretty well-known company, Kraft High. The total CEO compensation for him in 2016 was $43.3 million, while the median employee's salary was only $42,689, making his compensation 1,014 times higher. Miguel was born in Portugal, but moved to Brazil to get a business degree from a university in Sao Paulo. He cycled through many companies during his career, including Philip Morris, Coca-Cola, and Johnson & Johnson, working in exclusive exclusively executive roles. He moved on to Anheuser-Busch for two decades, where he eventually became the chief marketing officer and served in that role for six years. After that, he moved on to Kraft Heinz as CEO, where he currently resides and makes some pretty dang good money. Number 5. David Zaslav We all know TV is a money maker, but surprisingly, David Zaslav is the only person in the industry on this list. As the CEO of Discovery, his total 2019 CEO compensation was $45.8 million, a $2 million leap from Miguel Patricio. David was born in New York and attended Boston University School of Law, surprisingly. He worked as an attorney for a short time before switching paths and working for NBC Universal for 20 years. His main role was as the president of cable and domestic television, where he oversaw content distribution. This included controlling channels like Bravo, The Weather Channel, US. USA Network.
Network, A&E, The History Channel, and Sundance. He then made the move to Discovery as their CEO in January 2007, and the company began trading as a public company for the first time just a year later. His role as CEO has indeed made an impact on Discovery. He helped begin a 12-year relationship with PGA Tour, earning the live rights to all of their content. And that's a lot of content, over 2,000 hours per year. During his role, they've aired some of the most well-known and best-received programs, such as Planet Earth and Frozen Planet, basically a lot of planet-related content. He also launched Investigation Discovery, which was one of the faster-growing cable networks in the United States, mainly to anyone who likes murder mysteries. Number 4. John C. Plant The oldest CEO on our list, John C. Plant has been in the business for a while, and he certainly serves as the CEO of Howmet Aerospace, where he makes a good chunk of change. His 2019 compensation was 51 $0.7 million. Compared to the median employee salary of $55,497, he's worked in automotive industries in leadership roles for years and years. He was the president of Lucas Verity Automotive, a UK-based automotive parts company. When Lucas Verity was acquired by TRW Automotive, John became the chairman. He was successful at TRW for years. Under his leadership, TRW employed more than 65,000 people in over 190 facilities. TRW was then acquired by C.F. Friedrich Scheifen, and you may be seeing a pattern here. After TRW was out, John became the CEO of yet another company, Arconic Incorporated, for two years. He then moved on to Howmet Aerospace, which is an aerospace company that manufactures jet engines and other aerospace components. Number 3. Lisa Sue, the first woman on the list. Lisa Sue has made her way in a tough industry and worked hard to rise through the ranks. She's the current CEO of Advanced Micro Devices, which is a company you've probably never heard of, but you probably use their products every day. In 2019, her total CEO compensation was $58.5 million, compared to the median employee salary of $96,874. Lisa was born in Taiwan and immigrated to the United States at the age of three. At such a young age, she was interested in math and technology, and her parents fostered her learning. At 10 years old, she frequently took apart her brother's radio-controlled cars and put them back together again. She then went on to MIT, deciding on electrical engineering because she believed it to be the hardest engineering course there. She earned her master's and her PhD. Her first job was as part of the technical staff at Texas Instruments. Then she moved on to IBM, where she served as the vice president of their Semiconductor Research and Development Center, which is about exciting as it sounds. There, she played a vital role in changing and developing new materials to be used in semiconductor chips. Her work didn't go unnoticed. She became the technical assistant to IBM's CEO, then became the director of emerging products. After a few more job hops, she became the general manager of Advanced Micro Devices, a semiconductor company that develops computer processors. When she became the CEO, she encouraged the company to diversify. When she started, only 10% of the company's sales came from non-PC markets. By 2015, 40% came from non-PC markets, primarily from the video game industry. Number 2. Bob Swan If you want to see someone who's worked in about every role there is, Bob Swan, the current CEO of Intel, is your man. In 2019, his CEO compensation was a startling 66.9% million dollars, compared to the median employee salary of $96,300. Bob has taken on more roles than damn near anyone I know. He worked at General Electric in dozens of senior finance roles over a 15-year period. He became the CEO of GE Transportation Systems, then the vice president of GE Medical Systems in Europe. After that, he was the VP of Finance, then the CFO of GE Lighting. Finally, he was ready to make a move on from GE. He then became the CFO of Webvan until the company went under. Even after
after that, he managed to move on to Northrop Grumman Space and Mission Systems Corporations as their CFO. After that, he was the CFO of HP Enterprise Services and the CFO of eBay. So basically, he's gotten around in a few different industries. He eventually went on to become the CEO of Intel in 2018. Number 1. Sundar Pichai The highest paid CEO in the world, Sundar Pichai had a startling 2019 compensation of $280.6 million, more than four times the amount of the runner-up. The median employee salary at Alphabet, his company, is $258,708 a year, the highest amount on our list. Sundar got a metallurgical engineering degree from the Indian Institute of Technology, then got his MS from Stanford and his MBA from the University of Pennsylvania. He started working at Google in 2004 as a material engineer, where he led product management and innovation for Google Chrome. There, he oversaw important developments such as Gmail, Google Maps, and Android, which led him to rising even higher in the ranks. And in 2019, he became the CEO of Alphabet Incorporated. He's known for being even-tempered, empathetic, and thoughtful in his role as CEO. He received a 96% approval rating from his employees, which is incredibly high. He's known for speaking very little in meetings and allowing others to speak, contributing only after others have said their piece. So, there you have it, the 10 highest paid CEOs. What do you think? Are they a little bit overpaid or do you think they should be making more? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe and turn on post notifications and maybe drop me a like on Instagram for the one time. As always, 